Hi Tara Mors, Ruel here, and I hope you're all doing great today. Since a lot of you have been asking my tricks about storing moss, considering the weather that we have as a tropical country, which is always hot, here I will be showing to you what does best for me. As you all know, living in a tropical country experiences two types of seasons only, the dry and the rainy seasons. It's always hot in here, but there is this baggy city where it's cold most of the year, making a lot of terrarium plants like moss to thrive there. And that's where we get our moss from our farm. Before we begin, here are three customized illusion series that I made for private clients and are under observation before release. Our studio is still under renovation as of the moment, that's why there are terrariums everywhere. In the first build, the long ends of Silagenella Uncinata creates an artistic accent, draping water droplets on its roots. This next one theme is all green, that's why a variety of plants in green spectrum only can be found here and they are now doing well. The third and the last one is also a simple and a lush build. Now let's start restocking new mosses to my moss bins and identified here that there are still some cuttings and moss. When cleaning your moss, I truly advise to use rainwater to naturally rehydrate them. And yes, we do store rainwaters in our house in Las Piñas. Later, you will see that there is nothing really special in these moss bins. They are all empty, there's no substrates, just moss. When I was starting and this passion turned into business, I've been watching a lot of vlogs, researching how to take care of moss in large scale, storing, and of course, avoiding mold growth. I did a lot and tried a lot and experienced a lot. I even put lava rocks on the base, DS3 peat moss, sphagnum moss, name it, I did it all. And how I ended up with this nothingness but very very effective. From a science concept I remembered way back third year college, from my systematic subject, mosses in theory can grow in any environment because they have these unique root-like systems called rhizoids and can cling in any surfaces or substrates when provided all the parameters it needs to thrive. So as you can see, these moss are more than a month old and still green in color and can be still used in a terrarium. I always start by getting clumps of mosses since they are easier to clean as they come together. Basically, your target moss here are the ones that are color green, no fungal growth at base, and please remove all the unwanted plants growing with the moss, specifically the Pilea microphylla. For me, yes, it is an okay terrarium plant, but when it is already a matured plant, it contains seeds to gather its flowers. They attract molds easily in your moss bins. So if I were you, try to remove them. Do not hesitate to remove unwanted things on your mosses. Keep in mind that it should be clean so it could stay in the long run. Soak them in water for 10 minutes, then squeeze gently to remove excess water before transferring in the moss bins. In 
in here, I tend to remove the Pilea microphylla together with some species of ferns because in the latter part, they tend to get mold and attract mold easily in my moss bins. Of course, all life is valuable. Small spiders or worms keep them alive. Pause and rescue it when needed. Some clump of moss tend to grow mutually with terrestrial carnivorous plants like this Otricularia warburgi. I tend to collect these and keep them in a terrarium glass with a bug. I always adore their cute little leaves and their little pink flowers. In my class, I remember, I always love to discuss symbiotic relationships. These open the eyes and the mind of my students that there are really organisms like plants and animals and fungi and some others that they can really live together and benefit from one another, sometimes get harmed or even used as a prey. Again, Keep all the animals you find while cleaning the moss, save them, find a location or an enclosure that you can keep them. This is actually my first time seeing this yellowish worm with black linings. Very interesting. You know, these plants have always been living mutualistic with my mosses. And to guess what family or genus it came from, I think it's a Lodisha or a Crepidium or a Malaxia species. Anyways, Teramors, I believe that's all for this moss cleaning and storing vlog, you guys. 
If you have more questions, I'd be delighted to answer them in the comments below. Thank you everyone. Stay tuned.